Hey, what's going on? This is Joel here with the Money Codes, and I'm here to give you today's Money Code Fix. And today we're going to be discussing 50 Cent's book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. Now, I read this book probably about six to eight months ago, and as I usually tend to do, I like to go back through my notes, and I thought it would be a good subject for this YouTube channel. Now, I'm not going to lie, my initial expectations were a bit mixed because I've seen so many different artists go ahead and try to merchandise different areas of their business once the record industry died. For example, you have rappers bundling their clothing line along with their albums, rappers getting into cannabis, television, movies. So a part of me was a little hesitant because I didn't know how serious he would take this book. And I have to admit, after completing the book, it exceeded my expectations. And this is why I wanna jump into it today with you. So now let's discuss what principles can we take from Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. So depending on how old you are, you may have a different idea of who 50 Cent is. Back in high school, my first introduction to 50 Cent was when he made How to Rob, which was a diss record, going at everybody from ODB, Big Pun, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Nas. He went after the whole industry, and that was my first introduction to who this guy was. 50 may have been hip hop's first troll before internet trolling became a thing. So he came on the scene beefing with everybody, essentially ending Ja Rule's career. And over time, as I'm paying attention to what this guy's doing in the industry, he later on closes a deal with Vitamin Water and Glassau for $200 million reportedly. He ends up doing a movie with Robert De Niro and it starts to look like he's leaving the music industry and is now taking over Hollywood, becoming an executive producer on projects like Power. So if you're not really paying attention to what he's doing, it looks a little bit reckless. But the more I read, the more I pay attention. And now after reading the book, going back and seeing how he maneuvered his way during different eras of his career, this guy is far from reckless. He actually knows what he's doing to the point where if you're paying attention, you can actually see a theme from the very beginning to what he's doing now on Instagram, he's following a similar blueprint and it's been working over and over and over again. And I think some of these things we can actually apply to ourselves for those who are trying to be an entrepreneur and to excel in whatever industry that you're in. In the book, I can kind of take away three major principles when I'm paying attention to how 50 Cent moves in his career. The first theme would be discipline. The second theme would be his approach to fear. And the third would be adaptability. In my opinion, those are three major themes that I keep seeing over and over and over in his career and what he's writing in this book. So let's start with the first. So in the book, 50 Cent talks about discipline being a major keystone in his career. So when he's on tour, he finds a way to wake up and to work out when he's in the club having to do promo for albums or having to do Hollywood meetups. One of the secrets that he actually shared was when he's with other celebrities in the club popping bottles doing promo, what he does is he pours out the champagne that is in his bottle and he fills it up with ginger ale. And while other people are getting drunk, other rappers, other music executives, he's sober drinking ginger ale and he believes number one that physical fitness sobriety actually helps him to maintain his optimal level of performance and then number two being the only person sober in the club he notices that when people get drunk they tend to be a little bit more looser with their lips they're able to share things that maybe they shouldn't be sharing and he's able to just sit back and kind of absorb the information and later on he's able to use that information to however he sees fit it's a very cerebral and Machiavellian approach to life, but it's not surprising because 50 Cent also did a book with Robert Greene, who is famously known for creating the book 48 Laws of Power. So I can easily see 50 Cent in the club in the corner laid back observing the situation. It's what you would expect out of a character from Game of Thrones. The second theme that I thought was important was fear and how he approaches fear or how he faces fear head on. And there are two quotes that I want to read that encompasses this idea. If you fear loss, you can't spend your life avoiding intimacy and love, something I've struggled with. If you feel failure, you can't stop taking risks. If you fear the unknown, you can't stop trying new experiences. It is not death that a man should fear, said Roman emperor and philosopher Marcus Aurelius, but he should fear never beginning to live. And here's one more. Here's the bottom line. Whether you are a rapper, a stockbroker, scientist, school teacher, or drug dealer, 
you're going to experience peaks and valleys. Even when you think you've been through it all, you're going to find out that there's still more shit to go through. These are two great quotes that I pulled directly from the book, especially the second one, because if you watch my other video on emotional intelligence, you would have remembered that the studies show that it's not the person who is the the most book smart, the person who knows the most facts. It's the person that is able to master their own emotions, master their own feelings, and be able to make the right decisions regardless of whatever the emotions are. So 50 being able to be in situations that are pretty much life and death. Remember, this is the guy that first came on the scene being known for being shot nine times and surviving. There was another interview he had with Robert Greene and he was asked what was his mentality, what was his mental shift of being able to survive and to thrive in all of these areas that he's in. And in a nutshell, he said that being able to get shot and survive, he pretty much already looked death in the eyes and was able to get out of it. So everything else that comes out of it, whether it be a boardroom discussion or a contract negotiation, he's able to be very comfortable being in uncomfortable situations, maintaining his level of thought and making the action that is best for him. In a nutshell, he does not let the situation or the circumstance rattle him to the point where he runs and hides. The level of tenacity and his threshold being in uncomfortable situations is literally off the charts. On the flip side of the emotional intelligence that he displays is he told a story of an executive friend that he has who was very brilliant. And he and this executive friend, when they're having discussions together, when they're just mano a mano, his friend is brilliant. He is offering a whole bunch of ideas. He has a whole bunch of answers. And what 50 ended up doing was when he went into meetings with his friend, he noticed that any time that his friend was called upon to answer a question or when there was a discussion where he knew his friend had the answer for, he kept looking at his friend and realized his friend wasn't saying anything. His friend wasn't raising his hand and stepping up to the plate to let the entire room know, hey, I have the answer. The fact that his friend was unable to get outside of his comfort zone and really establish himself and showcase what he's able to bring to the table, 50 attributed that as the reason for why his friend wasn't a bigger executive. Now he doesn't name the friend and he says that his friend is successful, but he believes that if his friend was able to be like him and be more comfortable, in uncomfortable situation and putting himself out there that he would actually be more successful. So this leads me to ask you, what areas of your life are you dimming your light to appease other people? Or what areas in your life where you're kind of shrinking yourself or you're making yourself not as visible when it's time to step up to the plate? Maybe you're in fear of judgment. Maybe you're fear of getting the wrong answer if you're in school. Maybe you're fearful of saying the wrong thing in front of your boss at work. What are some areas where you can actually take a bigger step, get outside of your comfort zone, and show the light that you actually have to share with the world? Here's another good quote of 50 being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. My strategy was pretty straightforward. I'd always prefer to be friends with someone, but if they're not interested, but I consider being enemies the next best option. Why? Because if you hate me, you're more likely to talk about me. If you feel passionately about me in a negative way, at some point, you're probably going to say to your friend, man, I can't stand 50 Cent. Your friend is going to ask you why. And just like that, I've become the subject of a conversation. That's all I'm asking for. And the note that I put in my book was, he doesn't want anyone being neutral towards him. He just wants that energy. So in many situations, sometimes we feel like we either need to be shrunken or we need to kind of go with whatever the status quo is but 50 is actually showing that being hidden isn't really helping you even if your name is being brought up in a controversial way you're still being brought up he's able to take that energy that promotion that controversy and take that energy and funnel it into his goals and he's able to do that over and over again again this is why he started off his career with how to rob most people's first exposure to 50 Cent was him going at everybody, including Jay-Z, and Jay-Z inevitably responded to him. And that exposure, that light of having a bigger artist like Jay-Z even mentioning 50 Cent's name, he's done this with promoting his TV show Power and beefed with Game of Thrones. He even beefed with Oprah Winfrey at one point, but later on ended up turning that into an opportunity for him to be on her TV show. Here's another quote. But I still learned a valuable lesson with how to rob. People always respond to a competitor. When you're viewed as someone who's going to run into the fray, as opposed to running from it, 
you'll always have eyes on you. Whether it's rap, sports, politics, media, or business, there's always going to be an audience for someone who isn't afraid to mix it up with their rivals. Now, if you're an entrepreneur or if you're somebody in the workplace, I'm not telling you to make a rap beef with your coworkers or with your competitor, but you may want to take a second and think about what are some ways to generate some energy among the product or service that you are affiliated with. You may remember there was a time where Kanye and 50 Cent had their beef and they ended up galvanizing both of their fan bases and they ended up dropping their albums on the same day. He actually goes into this into the book. This was a time where Kanye was on an upward trajectory and 50 Cent and Interscope, the label, the record label Interscope at that time, wasn't giving 50 Cent the attention that he wanted. He felt that they dropped the ball with the promotion, they dropped the ball with doing what they were supposed to do to give his music and his album the biggest spotlight. He contrived a beef with Kanye West. All of Kanye's fans came and supported Kanye. All of 50's fans came and and supported and they both had a monstrous first week sale he made a comment in the book that said even though he lost because Kanye did end up selling more albums than 50 all of the promotion that that generated it actually made him sell more albums than he was projected to originally sell so again this is just another example where 50 is using controversy he's using energy he's using the eyeballs and the opinions of the masses and directing it to whatever he's trying to sell. In that example, it was his albums. When he beats with Taraji P. Henson or Game of Thrones, he does that to support his TV show, Power. He's not afraid of mixing it up when it comes to energy and controversy. He also showed that he's not waiting on the record label or any other third party to go and do the work for him. If the record label is not going to help him, he's going to take matters into his own hands. He's going to be comfortable being uncomfortable and he's going to get his goal regardless. And lastly, the third theme was adaptability. Now, when 50 made his first album, Get Rich or Die Trying, I remember the record label wanted him to come out with his second album very quickly, but 50 wanted to put on his boys. He wanted to put on the guys that he knew from the street mainly Tony Yeo, who at that time just got out of jail, and Lloyd Banks, which was another rapper from Queens, who many people, even myself included, believed was a better technical rapper than 50 Cent himself. And one of the stories that 50 told was, he began to take it personally because he wanted Tony Yeo and he wanted Lloyd Banks to become bigger stars. He wanted them to be as big as he was, but he noticed that they weren't able to adapt. He said for Tony Yeo, Tony Yeo wasn't as easily able to adapt to the record industry and still had issues with having one foot in the streets and one foot being a successful, legitimate businessman. He had a conversation with Lloyd Banks when it came down to social media and he was talking to Lloyd Banks and Lloyd Banks releases a lot of mixtapes that are critically acclaimed, but no one really knows about it. And he told Lloyd Banks, hey, go online, go on social media, go on Twitter, go on Instagram and start documenting your life put yourself out there because you're going to be able to generate more interest more eyes on you and lloyd banks responded by saying biggie and tupac didn't need to have social media so i don't need to have social media now number one we already know biggie and tupac was dead well before social media was even invented but number two that also shows if you are unwilling to change if you are somebody that believes well social media is just this new thing i don't have to deal with it or it's below me or other people have to do that not me if you are showing an unwillingness to go with the times and adapt you're going to be selling yourself short so what areas in your life are you being resistant to change are you an entrepreneur that is scared to put yourself out there in social media? Are you feeling like you're too old or you're too mature to do certain things because it doesn't sit well with you? Or are you somebody that is able to not take things personally, but just understand that as times change, as media changes, the record industry is dead, television is pretty much dead. I can't even tell you the last time I watched something on television. Normally it's either Netflix, Hulu, or I'm streaming something on social media. So if you are a creator, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are someone with a gift, understand that the world is changing and it's ever changing. Now juxtapose Lloyd Banks not wanting to adapt and to change or feeling like maybe he's too cool or too true to the game to adapt. Juxtapose that with somebody like Snoop Dogg, someone who came out in 1993 with Doggy Style, someone who was on death row, made records with Tupac, 
And now you see him hosting celebrity boxing matches. He's doing television shows with Martha Stewart. Like, think about that for a second. The brand of Snoop Dogg was super gangster rap, West Coast rapper. Now you see him on television commercials drinking Corona and doing deals with Martha Stewart. That's why Snoop Dogg is a household name. So in what ways can you adapt your brand, your business? How can you change and keep up with the ever changing marketplace? And here's the final quote that I wanna share when he's talking about taking L's, taking losses, or you can look at it as taking lessons. Here's a quote that he has on taking lessons. Don't look at failure as something you need to distance yourself from. Try to embrace it instead. Wrap your hands around it and examine it. Believe that you can use it to rebuild your idea and take it to even a higher level than you originally conceived. That's the approach all true winners take. It's the attitude Honda possessed when he said, my biggest thrill is when I plan something and it fails. My mind is filled with ideas on how I can improve it. To me, that mindset is huge. Most of us are looking at losses, looking at failures in life as we're not good enough. When you have high achievers who are emotionally adept, they don't really care when they make a mistake. They look at it as another opportunity. That they can take something from it and create a bigger and better product. So I think if we can reframe in our head, we shouldn't be trying to avoid taking L's or taking losses, but embrace it. Try to find ways where we can fail more and fail often. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you had a couple of gems out of this. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you read this book and I'm going to catch you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.